We are in the kitchen, and we're here with Mario from the Newburgh Deli. And Mario, thank you for taking a minute to be with us today. You know, you're going to educate us a little bit on olive oil and how it works. But let's talk first of all a little bit about the Newburgh Deli. Who are you? What have you been doing? Because a lot of people are now familiar with the Newburgh Deli. We are. Thank you, Art, for the opportunity to talk about this subject I'm, I'm very passionate about. I own the Newburgh Deli. It's located in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I run it with my wife. It's, it's sort of a mom and pa little sandwich shop eatery. It's gotten a lot of good reviews on the internet. We just won this Cheesesteak of the Year award for the Lehigh Valley, so we're, we're pretty excited about the, um, the exposure Deli's had. And, and today we're going to talk a little bit about you know some cooking applications and a subject that's near and dear to my heart, which is olive oil. Well, let's talk about olive oil. You know, first of all, a little background. Uh, you know, you know a little bit about olive oil for a couple of reasons. Uh, you did some extensive research on it. I have. In the year 2000, I picked up my family. I did something very unusual. I moved my wife and three children to Europe. I spent a considerable amount of money living in Greece and in Italy, predominantly in the Peloponnesian region and southern Italy, studying the craft and the artistry of olive oil. I wanted to find out, how is this stuff made? You know, where does it come from? What's true olive oil? And the reason I did that is because I discovered seven years ago that someone hasn't been telling us the truth about olive oil and how we use it. And uh, I wanted to find out the facts about true oil. So I picked up and moved to Europe. And there's, there's so much to learn about this topic. Well, I know you uh, have a lot to tell us on this segment. So why don't you move along and run it the way you'd like to? What would you like to start with? I mean, we have different kinds of oil here today. Well, first of all, you know, olive oil in general, you know, who uses it? It's always been, you know, associated with Italians and Spaniards and, and people the like in Mediterranean, but it's really becoming mainstream in the world. You know, for example, a few stats, you know, the olive oil intake in the United Kingdom has improved by 20% last year. Most people don't realize that 40% of all the olive oil consumption in America is done within a 100-mile radius of New York City. You know, some of the big players in olive oil are Italy, the biggest manufacturer, Spain being the biggest grower. So these are some statistics you, you learn about oil, and in that process, there's some fudging that's going on. It's become such a global industry that everybody understands the taste effects of it, and people are touting health effects, so therefore it's a frenzy to get good olive oil. And I think a lot of manufacturers have um, used that as an opportunity to bolster their profits by implementing certain practices that are not really healthy for you. So today, my biggest goal was to educate the average consumer on how to choose a good olive oil, how to use it, and why to understand the grades of olive oil. And if I may talk about the grades real quick, it's very important to understand that according to the International Olive Oil Council, there are four grades of olive oil. The first grade of oil would be called first cold pressed extra virgin. This is the finest grade of oil that you can find. It's actually hand picked at an estate in Europe predominantly and it is pressed within 48 hours and it's the first extraction of that oil which gives you all the flavor, all the qualities and the, and the best acidity rate that you can find in oil which is super important to your health and to your table taste. The second grade would be extra virgin being extra virgin is the second pressing of oil, which is still a good, a good grade of oil, but it's not as good a quality as the first pressing. Sometimes there is a mechanical process involved in the second pressing that exceeds 86 degrees, which would therefore be rendered as non-cold press. So it's very important to understand that, the machinery that's used, because once you put heat to this live enzymic product, you distort nature's qualities and you distort the flavor. So the third, the third pressing of the oil in the Italian culture would be called the, the pumice or pomace. Now the pumice pressing is a, is a rather injurious pressing in that it's not really meant for human consumption. They utilize two um, highly toxic chemicals to extract the last bit of oil out of that pulp that remains in the machinery and they, they also put heat to the oil, so it, it becomes very acidic. You'll know a pumice oil when you taste it. You'll put it in your, your finger or you'll, you'll taste it, and it'll go to the back of your throat, and it'll give it a real harsh stinging effect. You really want to stay away from that. And last but not least is, the, is Lampante grade, which is the fourth grade. And Lampante grade is basically an oil that's inedible. It's made for 
um, industrial use, and you want to discard that. And Lampanti in Italian means lamp oil. It's what the Italians or Middle Easterns used to put in their lamps in biblical days. It's not what you want to eat. So it's very important to read your bottle and understand the grade you're getting. Here's the misnomer in this industry, which infuriates me to a bit as a consumer, as a father, and a cook. USDA inspects oil when it comes from overseas. The containers come to New Jersey or Wilmington, and they open the doors, and the FDA inspector's there, and he's got his checkboard and his white coat, and he's looking for labeling and the disclosure of the fat content nutritional label, and he sees all the nomenclatures in place, and he says, check, great, first cold press, extra virgin. Okay, boys. Let her go through. And you would think it's safe for your usage. Sadly, the FDA or other governing agencies do not test the chemical quality of the oil. They don't do an analysis on its purity and its authenticity. So we're left up to the honesty of the importers to give us a pure product. Sadly, most, I didn't say all, most of the products utilized in supermarkets, the big shopping clubs you belong to where you buy the gallon for $12, you know, those oils undoubtedly are a blend. And blends, as you may know, are injurious to your health. I utilize a perfect monosaturated fat oil in that it's hand-picked from Europe and it's pressed within 48 hours. It's never filtered, it's never heated, it's never blended, it's never compromised. Whereas all these other oils, predominantly on the shelf, are infused, get this folks, with soya bean and hazelnut oil. Reason being is because they are an odorless, tasteless oil that manufacturers can cut the product and stretch their profits. And to me, that is really dishonest. And I'm not trying to bash importers. I'm saying you deserve a good wholesome product just as your neighbors would want to seek out grass-fed beef or Atlantic raised salmon, wild caught. These are the buzzwords in health industries today. I'm not necessarily touting organic whole foods today or health foods. I'm touting a good product that you can be sure of is good for you and not damaging your body. So let's talk about how you use it because uh, I think there's the confusion there a little bit too about what grade you use for what. And I know you've got some different ones here. Do you yeah. want to kind of tell us about that? I do. These are some of the typical brands that you might use you know, in, in the supermarket, you know, some of the, the big importers come in containers like this. And I want to educate you. Now, I, I bought this one here not to try to denigrate any particular brand, but I bought this, and it's, it's nearly a half liter of extra virgin olive oil. And living in Europe and going to 40 presses over the course of a year and understanding the wholesale cost of oil, it is impossible for a manufacturer to put a half a liter of olive oil in this size bottle being pure and sell it for $4.99. Because I know that the wholesale price of this oil from the press is well over eight to 10 euros for a half a liter. So it's very expensive. So I'm, I'm a little uh, concerned about the authenticity of certain oils. One oil you definitely wanna stay away from, and I'm certainly not trying to bash in industries or farmers, because this product doesn't come from a farm. It's called canola oil. Canola oil for years was taught by you know the health industry even people in health food stores is very good for you it's better than olive oil well the news is out that canola oil is not really a natural product canola oil there's no such thing as a canola plant let's just say that canola oil is a laboratory created product it is actually an oil that is a byproduct from the manufacturing of insecticides it was used as the main component in mustard gas during world war one it has many, many destructive properties to your body. I would highly suggest doing some Google searching on canola and its derogatory effects on your body and realize that what we've been told is actually um, a misnomer. Again, here's a California brand of extra virgin olive oil. Yes, California does make oil for the last 30 years. The, the majority of their species or plants, trees, came from Europe, uh, Spain and Italy, and they were infused in California soil. They make an excellent oil. Uh, it's a bit pricey. It has a more lighter, fruitier taste versus your oils that are imported from the old country. The old country oils have more of a patina to them and a little more hearty, stronger olive oil flavor. And this here is one of your typical bottles you'll find in the supermarket for $12.95, um, you know, insinuating um, extra virgin cold press. So just about, about these products, you know, you could go to these stores today and you can go to 
um, what's called olive oil boutique shops. And some of these places will charge you um, $20 for a bottle that's one-third this size for pure oil. And you're probably getting the right oil, but you're going to pay. You know, your health is worth it, and if it costs you 20% more to get good oil, I would suggest to over immediately to a hand-picked estate oil because the flavor's there, your health is worth it. And I personally use this brand here, which is called Vita Bella. I happen to own the brand. I've been manufacturing for seven years, and this is a 750 milliliter bottle of Vita Bella. And it's an estate oil from Avellino, Italy. I'm members of the co-op there, and we have a great relationship. We harvest in December, and it's a superb product. And this bottle retails for $17.99. If you're in the valley, it ships for about six or seven dollars, and I have a trial size bottle for eight ninety nine of the same product in a roughly two hundred milliliter fashion with the artisan cork on it. Now, someone can go to the website and they could order that if they wanted to, correct? They can. You go to you go to Newburg Deli N E W B U R G Deli dot com, and it's on the, you, it's they, on the screen. So they out, and we'll send it out to you. A lot of folks come in. Okay, so we're running out of time. Running out of time on this segment. So what we want to do is tell us how we use this stuff, and what is he going to show us today? Today. Excellent. Well, today's applications are going to be uh, predominantly a cold utilization of good oil. A lot of folks don't really know this, but olive oil can make a great appetizer for any pre-dinner setting. So what we do in European culture, and definitely in American culture, is we drizzle oil on a plate. And then we do a simple uh, utilization of salt and pepper and maybe a light bit of garlic powder. Notice the garlic is always bigger than the salt and pepper. Okay, and then you take your favorite bread, in this case it's baguette bread or a, a crusty Italian bread, and you dip it in the bread and you proceed to eat it just like that. And it becomes an excellent tasty treat or an antipasto in, in certain cultures. Um, if you want to step it up a notch, they have in America or across the world what's called infused oils. Now infused oils is when you take a pure olive oil and you mix it with herbs, and you're going to infuse that product to change its taste component. So in this case, we'll put a little bit more oil on the plate, and I have rendered some uh, fresh-cut rosemary, uh, fresh parsley, um, and oregano into uh, that oil, and I've made it now an infused oil. Typically, you can put it in one of your smaller olive oil bottles, put the herbs in the bottle, maybe sometimes a little bit of crushed red pepper if you like the zing, and you can shake it, let it sit for several days, and it really becomes a tasty application for marinades and bread applications. Now, thirdly, what I'd like to share with you on the oil is a cold salad application. In this instance, we have a caprese salad, which is uh, very popular in the uh, European culture, becoming kind of mainstream in America. Let me just stir my, my other my final products here so we're, we're on target for um, the last demo. Okay. The caprese salad consists of fresh mozzarella, basil, tomato, and I've, I've laced some fresh prosciutto within, which is a, a fine cured Italian ham within the salad. And then you want to drizzle liberally this gorgeous first press organic olive oil from Italy. You want to slight pepper, and slight salt. No garlic application on this product. It'll definitely compete with those other bursting flavors. This is a okay, awesome okay. process, cold and you can serve an unoiled the cold bread application, application series of olive oil would be in a marinating process. Most people don't know that using olive oil in a marinade is a very good thing. Why? Number one is because the herbs and the salt and the, the spices get to stick to the meat product when you're marinating. Also, olive oil has a lot of enzymic qualities, and the enzymes actually allow the proteins in the meat or the fish to break down a little faster because meat is muscle. We don't want toughness in meat. Therefore, olive oil lends a breaking down process. And let's face it, when you grill a piece of meat with olive oil, especially first cold press, you've got an awesome crust and the flavor is just there. In this case, I've made a marinade of, of white wine, water, and lemon juice. It's a special marinade, and then you want to add some fresh chopped ginger to it. Obviously, some good garlic, fresh cut garlic. I do put a bit of pimento in there. 
a bit of pimento, pardon the hands, but we're in a hurry here. You definitely want a little bit of crushed red pepper, parsley. In this case, I use sea salt. I'm not big on iodine. Sea salt's much healthier, or Himalayan salt. A little bit of garlic powder. And then you can take that marinade and you can give it a, a nice gentle shake to it in, in a separate container. And in this case, I have a piece of chicken. Let me get a fork. <laughs> get a piece of chicken. And it, for your chicken, you want to you use a couture. If you don't have a couture, a French jabber, if you will, you can use a fork to tenderize any piece of meat like that. And then you want to pour that, that marinade over there with that lemon juice and the olive oil in there. I've already pre-olive oiled the chicken, so I put a little more on top there to, to guarantee its marinating process. And there, you, and you let that soak for roughly um, several hours if you can, if not overnight, and it'll have a, a pre-cooking effect to it, and it's perfect for the grill. You will wow your guests with that product. Finally, we're going to use olive oil in a similar cold cooking fashion by making a green bean to garlic pimento salad. In this case, it's great for the summer. It's got a nice look to it. It's very healthy. Remember, you want to maintain the, 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 the chlorophyll um, qualities and the plant qualities of the olive oil. So in this case, you're going to get steamed green beans. You want them al dente, just slightly, just slightly cooked, slightly firm. You don't want to kill them, boil them for six hours. You want to put sautéed olive, sautéed pimento and and garlic on those green beans like so, and then you want to drizzle the green beans liberally with olive oil. This is the standard, the SPG in the gourmet food world: salt, pepper, slight garlic powder, and then you want to toss them lightly in there. This salad goes right into the refrigerator. You didn't put heat to that oil. You save the nutritional quality of that oil. Can't you just smell the aroma of that olive oil on top of a steamed green product? And it just, it just brightens your day up. It gives you a healthier product. Let that chill for roughly four to five hours and serve as an appetizer or as an accompany vegetable to any main meal. So what we demonstrated today is how to use olive oil in a non-cooking fashion. And, you know, it's... It's a marvelous product. If you're not using olive oil right now in its purest form and using an estate oil for such things, you need to really try that. And next time we meet, I'd like to talk to you about how to cook with olive oil with a couple of various dishes that are quick, easy, and affordable for your family. Well, Mario, as always, thank you. We're out of time. We've got to go. But if someone wants to know more about this, obviously the Newburgh Deli, Mario is the chef. Come in for a cheesesteak, come in for food, but you will find We're catering. you're more than happy to explain to people how to cook because that's your passion in I life. Love talking olive oil. Wrap it up, final word. What should people think about? They're thinking about olive oil. They can purchase this at the Newburgh Deli. Sure. It's a special oil that you have for these purposes. Stop in and get it. Excellent. Come on and see my wife and myself. Love to talk to you and become friends and be, become part of the Newberg Deli family. And we just, uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to, to meet you and, and share this good information with you.